Hey guys, Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to determine the oxidation number of an element. So oxidation number is just something that you can use to keep track of the flow of electrons. So you can determine what's being oxidized, what's losing electrons, and what's being reduced, and what's gaining electrons. Uh, we'll have the rules for the oxidation numbers right here. These rules are ordered in terms of priority. The higher up they are on this list, the higher the priority. So if you have two rules that clash with each other, go up to one that's higher up on the list. I've also broken these rules down into two categories, that for single elements and those for combination with multiple elements. Let's start with the, the rules for single elements. So if you have an rule number one, if you have an atom that is in its elemental form, then its oxidation number will be zero. So I'll give you a couple examples related to these rules so you can see how the rules are applied. So if you have an element in this elemental form, such as Na, then its oxidation number will be zero. Uh, O2 would also be zero because O is diatomic, so uh, this is its natural elemental form. N2, also zero because that's also another element, element in this elemental form. Uh, likewise, F2 would be zero, K would be zero, S8 is also zero. The all of these are just element in their natural elemental form, so it'll have oxidation number of zero. Rule number two, the oxidation number of a monoatomic ion will equal to the charge. So if you have a single element with a charge, then its oxidation number will equal the charge. Like if we have an A+, plus, then the oxidation number will be positive one. If it was O2 minus, then the oxidation number would be negative two. N3 minus, the oxidation number would be negative three. Ca2 plus, oxidation number would be positive two. Then if you have a single element that, that has a charge, its oxidation number will equal the charge. Okay, now let's take a look at the second the second category when you have a combination of multiple elements. There are, are six rules for this category, and I think it just makes the most sense to jump into examples and not go through the rules individually because these rules, they depend on each other. Let's start with the first example of sodium chloride. Well, sodium is an alkali metal, and there's a rule for that. It says that elements in the first group will have an oxidation number of positive one. Chlorine, there's a rule for that as well. It says that uh, halogens are usually negative one. So we have rules for both of these, so that was pretty easy. Next one, let's take a look at calcium oxide. Uh, calcium is in the second group, and there is a rule for that. Elements in the second group will have an oxidation number of positive two. Oxygen, uh, this is one that you're gonna see a lot, so it's, it's, good, it's good to definitely remember this one. Oxygen generally will have an oxidation number of negative two, except when it's in peroxide, when it's negative one. So here is just an ionic compound, so it'll have the normal oxidation number of negative two. Let's take a look at an example of when it is negative one in peroxide. So here we have sodium peroxide. Uh, H, the rule for that is it, positive one when it's bonded with nonmetals, and it's negative one when it's bonded with metals. It's bonded with oxygen, which is a nonmetal here, so it'll be positive one. When you're reporting oxidation numbers, always report the oxidation numbers for the elements individually. So although we do have two H's, each H is just positive one. Now you can think of it in total as positive two, but individually they're positive one. Then oxygen. Oxygen normally is negative two, except when it's when with peroxide, and this is hydrogen peroxide, so this is negative one right here. This is one that you you may see on your exam where your, t your teacher or professor will throw it in to, just to check if you know all your rules. Now let's take a look at lithium hydride. So lithium is a group one element, so it'll just be positive one. And then hydrogen, uh, normally it's positive one, but when it's bonded with metal, it's negative one, and lithium's a metal, so this would be negative one. Now let's take a look at another example, NO. So this example involves an element that that we don't have a rule for. There's no rules for nitrogen, so that's where we have to use rule number three, that the sum of all the oxidation numbers equals the overall charge. Well, we know that oxygen is negative two because the oxygen is bonded with um, a nonmetal. You can see that it's negative two. And then nitrogen, uh, since this has an overall charge of, of nothing, because if it did have, a, have an overall charge, you'll see something right here, like you'll say a negative one or a negative two. But you, since there's no charge right here, that means the overall charge is zero. So if O is negative two, then N must be positive two to make it overall charge zero. Let's take a look at another example, NO3 minus. So this one does have a negative one charge overall. Well, we know that each oxygen individually is negative two. So we can, and then we have to solve for nitrogen. We know that N plus the o, O3s have to equal negative one. So we can actually set up an expression, algebraic expression. We can call it NX, X plus 
three auctions, each auction is negative two, and then that has to sum up to the overall charge of negative one. So this is x minus six equals negative one. So that means x must be positive five. You can think of this as negative six overall, so that has to be positive five to make the overall charge negative one. Next one, and two, oh, four. Uh, we know that O is negative 2, and then to solve for N, so overall this has this has no charge, um, so we can think of, this is negative 2 times 4, that's, so that's negative 8, so that means this overall has to be positive 8, so that means individually each of these is positive 4. Or you can, again, set up the algebraic expression, so we have two nitrogens, each nitrogen has an oxidation number of X, we don't know what that is yet, plus four oxygens, each oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2, and it has to sum up to the overall charge of zero because this compound has no, uh, it's neutral. So this would be 2x minus 8 equals zero. So 2x equals 8, and then you can see that x equals 4. Next one, F2O. So we have rules for both F, F and O. Uh, so F you can see is negative 1, and O is negative 2. But this can't just be negative 1 and negative 2 because they're both negative. They're not going to sum up to the overall charge of zero, and that's that takes precedence. So we, we're going to use the rule for F because F is higher on this list as higher priority. So F will be negative 1, which means that this will be overall negative 2, which means oxygen has to be positive 2 here. So this is an example where the, the rules clash with each other, and you just go with the rules that are higher up in the priority list. All right, let's take a look at two more. The next one, CaSO4. So Ca is in the second column. We know that's positive 2. O, we know that's negative 2. So we can use algebra to solve for S. So this is positive 2. This is going to be 2 plus x plus or minus 8 equals 0 because negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So then that would mean that x would have to be positive 6 because this would be positive 8 in total and cancel out into negative 8. And then one last example. Uh, let's take a look at one that combines multiple polyatomic ions, like NH4, NH4, and O3. Uh, to make, if you have multiple polyatomic ions, it's much easier to split them up and, and solve for the oxidation of each ion individually. So we know that NH4 is positive 1, it's ammonium, and NO3 is nitrate with an overall charge of negative 1. And then we know that um, H has to be positive 1, there, there, because there's a rule for that that's positive 1 when this would non-metals, so this overall would be positive 4, which would mean that n has to be negative 3 uh, to sum up to positive 1, All right? because positive 4 minus 3 equals positive 1. Now we can work on NO3. So we know that each of the, let's move this out of the way to make it a little bit clearer. So we know each of the O's will have an oxidation number of negative 2, so overall that makes O3 negative 6. Um, and the overall charge has to be negative 1, so then this has to be positive 5, because 5 minus 6 equals negative 1. And that's uh, how you would determine the oxidation numbers of uh, an element. I think it's most easy, it's easiest to just think of these rules as two categories, when you have individual elements versus when you have elements that are in, in combination with each other. And uh, depending on your professor you either or your teacher, you either have to memorize these rules or you'll have these rules on the test. Uh, in, another, in a future video, we'll go over some more examples just to help reinforce these rules. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide. Uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry, you can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.